And as I mentioned earlier in this video, I will have an exclusive about Dwarf Labs' latest release of the software and firmware for the Dwarf 2 telescope. Imaging planets. It's difficult with the Dwarf 2. We all know that. We knew that before we bought it. The Dwarf 2 really is designed for deep sky imaging, deep sky objects, galaxies, nebulas, star clusters, and the like. We know due to focal length issues, it's not the best, at least at the moment, for doing planetary objects. In the catalogue, you've got Mars, you've got Jupiter, Saturn, all the planets, the Moon, of course, the Sun, and that's all great. But when we try and actually image on them, they are just too small. This has been a problem. We'd love to see Saturn and its rings. We'd love to see Jupiter, its moons, maybe even the bands of Jupiter. And of course, Mars, we'd love to see that red planet just in a nice image on our phones. However, we know that's an issue. They're just too small. So what I've been doing, I'm going about this two ways. I've created a, an adapter. So allow me to use a two times multiplier, focal length multiplier, to try and see how we're going to get on when we're doing planetary imaging. Also, I'm in the process of developing my own two or even three times multiplier, which would just literally screw into the filter adapter. This is difficult. I'm having to learn about uh, optics, uh, lens, focal points, focal lengths. So what I've done initially is I've created an adapter I bought just off Amazon, and I'll put the link in the description below this video. I've put in a, a little 2x multiplier. Now it's not a Barlow lens. You do see, don't get confused. You do see, oh, Barlow lens, 2x, 3x, 5x Barlow lens. Um, that doesn't work. That will not work even if you can put it onto the filter adapter. As I said, a Barlow lens would be on the other side, it'd be on the eyepiece side, the viewing side, rather than the light gathering side. This adapter I've created, screw it into the filter adapter, and then from that filter adapter, lens adapter we'll call it, we screw in the two times the multiplier, it's a telephoto lens, a 2x multiplier. So I've done that, you'll see me now just making this using um, my CAD software and my 3D printer. Now, I will put a link in the description below if you want to get your hands on this adapter. It's a set size adapter that I've made. It will allow you to screw in this telephoto lens in the description for you so you can find that and order it yourself. And it'll work with the adapter that I've made specifically for the threading for the, the filter and this adapter. I, of course, will try the 2X adapter um, with the planetary imaging and see how that goes. Uh, what you're going to see in this video is some daylight testing of it. Like with the 2X telephoto lens, see how it looks with and without. You're going to see the daylight testing now. But of course, what we really want is to get these planets. It'd be nice to have even, you know, twice as good, twice as large images than we're getting right now. So with that being said, you're going to see uh, me develop this adapter, um, print it out, and actually you'll see it on the actual, show you on the actual lens itself. We'll show you the lens in the filter and it all attached to the Dwarf 2 telescope. Okay, so this is the telephoto lens I got off Amazon. Uh, I'll just take the cap off so we can read that properly. So, proper glass lenses. It's digital high definition, two times telephoto lens uh, from Japan Optics. Uh, so proper glass um, and not just plastic, which is good. This is only a tenner on Amazon. As I said, I'll put the link for this in the uh, description below. Uh, this is the smallest one I could find. There literally wasn't one with a smaller aperture on the thread side. Obviously, I'm not too worried it's on this side. No one, it's too big, of course. Um, it's this side we're talking about. Uh, this is a 37 mil thread that's on this. Your Dwarf 2 is 1.25 inch, which is 31.8, so 
32 mil roughly. I've got my fingerprints on it already. Uh, it's only slightly larger than the aperture uh, of the telephoto lens on the Dwarf 2. This, uh, as you can see, will not go into the adapter. Uh, you're getting most of the lens. I'm not sure if that's going to cut out too much light. We'll find out in a moment. So as you can see here, this is not going to fit onto this at all. It's just too wee, as we'd say here in Scotland. So what I've done, of course, I've created uh, this um, adapter, lens adapter. So we're going to put this on to make sure it's a telephoto, telephoto lens, there you go. So we're going to screw this on like so. Try not misread it. You've got to be very careful. They do misread very easily. Um, but there you go. That's quite nice. Lovely. So there you are, and you see this has given me now the 37mm aperture for this telephoto lens to go on. There we go, that's it screwing on nicely now, with a squeak. There we go, nice and tight. So there we are, this is now ready to go onto the Dwarf 2, and it should give me two times the magnification, so I should have twice the focal length now with the Dwarf 2 telescope. So I'll give you a wee close-up of this, so you can see that's it on here quite nicely. Unscrew this, and that leaves us with the adapter. That shows on nice and tight, and it's love nice. See, so one finger. If you're not, if you thread it properly, there's, it's not tight at all. It's it's nicely threaded. I've said this one uh, is on Amazon. The one I said I could find with the smallest aperture. Okay, we have a bird sitting on an aerial. That's telephoto lens, no multiplier. Let's do an autofocus. Let's put this telephoto lens on now. That's pretty good. Let's use the autofocus. Right, we're focused in on the bird. So just quickly then, again, I'll show with and without. So that's with. That's without. So you can see it's, yeah, definitely two times the multiplying. And that's with it on. So let's, autofocus is not bad. Definitely losing a bit of resolution, I would say, but when we're building up images, stacking of a planet, that shouldn't be an issue. And you can see it's a bit duller as well. Again, it shouldn't be a problem when we're stacking. That's looking pretty good. Right then. Test successful. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, I will have an exclusive about Dwarf Labs latest release of the software and firmware for the Dwarf 2 telescope. Now, I've been asked not to say too much at the moment. However, I have been in conversation with the development team at Dwarf Labs and I will be having an interview with them talking about a major new update to the software and firmware that we really want to see and a lot of us have been asking for. So, exclusive to Astro Dwarf Adventures, I'll be having a chat with those guys. And, you're hearing it here first, Dwarf Labs themselves will be having a live stream showing you exactly what this development actually is for the software and firmware. So, if you're not already subscribed to their channel, the official Dwarf Labs channel, what are you doing? Subscribe. Information, the link to their channel, official channel, is in the description below this video. So please subscribe to their channel so you don't miss their live stream when they're going to give you an overview and demonstration of the new software. You heard it here first. Closer to the time, you will see the chat I'm going to have with Dwarf Labs where we'll be giving you a little sneaky, but hopefully, behind the scenes. They haven't told me yet what they're going to tell me either. 
but a little sneaky at least of what this new software is about before they do their proper release on the live stream and then make this upgrade and update available to all Dwarf 2 telescope owners. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss my interview with Dwarf Labs and any other future content I'll be releasing for you. I will know more after I have the interview with Dwarf Lab and of course after their live stream event we'll all know a lot more and hopefully get very quick access to this game changing, I believe, speculation, but game changing software release and software update and firmware update to our Dwarf 2 telescopes. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. So thanks very much for joining me on this one. And remember to look up because you just don't know what you're going to see. Thanks guys, take care. I'll catch you on the next one.